Hello, everyone. Welcome to our bonus episode of Pink Hibiscus Live. Feels a bit odd during this, doing this during the day, but I'm really excited to bring you a very special guest today. Her name is Lena Broughton, and she designed actually everything I'm wearing today, the slip and the dress, and most of the stuff that you see me in online. Now, she's just joined, so let me add her to the chat. So we're going to be talking all about body positivity today and I couldn't think of anyone better than the gorgeous Lena to do that with. Hi Ned, how are you? <laughs> Hi, good, thank you. You might need to just good. move the camera up move a little bit. Up. Yeah, it does that thing when we both join, it totally ruins all the framing. Totally. <laughs> are we kind of matching in our colours today? Know. I know, that's why I thought. I thought I'd take my jacket off. I was like, it's oh, too good. I love it. It was a huge decision as to what to wear. I'm like combing <laughs> through my wardrobe. So I settled on my favourite. Which is... <laughs> You've probably got quite a few choices there. I do. Yep, quite a few. It's an addiction, but it's one I love. It's a healthy one. <laughs> it is indeed. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know your schedule is super hectic, so it really means a lot. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. It's awesome. Yay. Well, I thought before we dig into the whole body confidence and feeling good about yourself thing, yep. I thought... Why don't you, for the people who don't know who you are and how you've gotten to where you are today, can you tell us a little bit about your journey to now? Yes, definitely. I'll try and condense it down. Uh, I'm <laughs> Lena, Lena Broughton. Uh, so I, I'm in business partnership with uh, Fleur, who's my partner, and we run and own the label Lena Broughton. And that's uh, that what we create what we provide is that we create women's wear clothing but really specifically at professional women as well and the the label started I started the label 10 years ago now and it's just grown to so much more than I could have ever imagined as well uh, but it really started with a passion to I had quite a few friends who were kind of working in corporate spaces and I just watched them constantly kind of tr struggling to you know, it wasn't their thing that they wanted to focus on, yet they knew that it was really important to the outcomes that they were having in a professional environment. And so I wanted to create really beautiful clothing that was easy because I think for a really long time, professional clothing meant lots of ironing, lots of maintenance, um, feeling really stiff, feeling really constricted. And I wanted to bring colour and vibrancy, but also comfort into that space. Uh, so that's where it all started. And then, yeah, now we have just grown from strength to strength, but we still stayed really true on our fabrics, our prints, our colours. And also we produce, uh, like our garments are 100% uh, made in Australia as well. Which we love. Yes. Go Australian yes. businesses. Absolutely. <laughs> Now, your brand is very size inclusive. There are a lot out there that frustrate the hell out of me that they kind of stop at a size 16, sometimes even a 14. Yes. Uh, what, what encouraged you to make your brand so size inclusive? So I think at the beginning, it was actually really tricky, to be really honest. Like when I first started out, it was just the logistics of having so many different sizes. We now offer sizes 8 to 24. And for a long time there, it was actually size 8 to 18. And then it sort of evolved as we've become experts in that space of how to actually fit across such a, a broad size range. Because there's actually quite a lot involved with, you know, one of the things that we really believe in is not only doing sizes 8 to offering sizes 8 to 24, for, but ensuring that the garment or the product also fits really well across that entire size range as well. Because I think there's also the other side where, where brands are offering a broader size offering, but not necessarily being able to deliver on the fit. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, for me, I've worked in the industry uh, forever, my whole career. And, you know, the average size woman is 14 to 16. So to me, that, that should be the middle of the size range. So that's mm. where we came to that, where we go equally both sides of that. And I think, you know, to me, especially with bigger brands, when they're only going to a 16, I can't even begin to understand the, yeah. the mentality behind it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is the thing with, with your brand that I particularly love. Um, a, 
I know I'm a size 16. That is my size, but I know that when I buy a size 16 from you, it is actually going to fit me. And yes. it just takes the frustration out. But also it's a, it's a bit of a mental battle. I have to say, I mean, my mum, bless her heart, she bought me some pyjamas the other day right. and they were a size 20. And straight right. up, I looked at the packet and I went, I'm not a size 20 mum, I'm a size 16. And she goes, I know, but I also know this brand and yeah. they're, they're just cut small and, and they're going to shrink. So no. I'm like, I just don't, I immediately, when I put those pajamas on, I'm like down on myself because of that number that, you know, we guide our lives by. So I think, I think there's multiple parts in there, but I think also as well, that's one of the first things that we say to customers that, that your journey to finding uh, garments that fit you beautifully, don't, don't worry about what that number is. Yeah. It is about yeah. actually finding the right fit. But, but the second part as well is that there's no standardized uh, size chart. So mm -hmm. from a business perspective, it's actually really tricky because the only Australian size charts that exist are so old that it means that they don't actually um, they don't actually reflect where we are currently as well. So they've become mm. so antiquated that they're really not a reference point, which means that then every brand is kind of having their take on what they think is the correct size. And if they're def if the brand is selling overseas into different markets, it can be even more confusing as well. Yeah, I do have to say when I go over to the States and I shop, I feel really good. <laughs> size oh, 12. I was size 10 at one point. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? How am I able to fit into this? <laughs> I, when, I, when I first started the label, I had this whole thing of doing one, two, three, four, you know, as the size. Oh, yeah. of, and then it just confused everyone even more. I was like, oh, oh, forget it, forget it. Yeah, no, another brand does that and it just confuses me so much. Okay. Um, okay. At Teaching in Canberra, so we say don't worry about numbers, but it is so deflating. Yes, it is. It no, is. It, but it, it, is, it, is, it is a mindset thing. It is, very much so, very much yeah. so. Yeah. And you've done quite a bit of research yourself with your customers in, in a survey. Was it last year um, where yeah. you looked into their body types and preferences yeah and... we have we've done we've just recently completed one but we also done we've done a couple more before that as well and that's been out to our whole database and I guess you know it was kind of uncovering a few different things the one that we focused on last year was very much about understanding size but yeah. also in their height and also bra size as well so because while we don't do lingerie, obviously your bra size has a huge impact as you definitely personally know about that as well, Nat, with your journey. Is oh, that... I do. <laughs> I'm wearing the bra you recommended, oh. the Triumph Body Makeup. Yeah. It's amazing and it's yeah, like beautiful. five sizes smaller than it was a few months ago. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. So that's for us. Like we always believe that, you know, we, we believe that we are the fit experts in the industry. And part of that is not just making up the facts, but it's actually getting the real facts. And that is from our customers as well. Uh, so it's been amazing actually getting those insights as to really what it's looking like across that broad spectrum. Yeah. And I mean, body shapes have changed so much over the years and not necessarily body shapes have changed, but I guess the, um, what is considered beautiful Trends. or sexy yeah. or, you know, whatever we've gone through so many different iterations when you, when you look over the decades and I think we're in a good space now because, um, and it, it's, it's a journey. I hate that word, but it is a journey. Is. And, yeah. But I think that there's more acceptance. There are so many more models now, plus, well, plus, I hate that term as well, but real models, I guess yeah. I'm going to use rather than plus size, but there are more real models who are speaking out, advocating for the fact that there are, the norm needs to be displayed and, yeah. you know, and I think that's the thing. I think probably with models today as well, there's a much more broad spectrum available. For a really long time, agencies were only basically employing models that, that fit into a particular mold. So I guess now that's really changed in the fact that 
because there's so much more availability, like more availability and inclusivity of models as well, it means that more and more we're starting to see just different shapes, different heights, you know, even height wise models for a very long time were only 177 centimetres yeah. taller, which is such a small percentage of the population that fall into that height. But yeah. it was like on a height basis, it wasn't relevant. So I think it's, um, it's amazing being in a time where it is becoming more normalised that uh, we can actually see our, ourselves in the media on a more regular basis. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of it is due to brands like yourself who oh. utilise their customers yeah. as models like not only is it that you're showcasing a range of sizes but you're celebrating the women who absolutely love and wear your brand and yeah. that I mean I when you first started doing that I'd never seen it anywhere else and now there are a couple of coffee cup brands that are doing a similar thing but you know I really feel like you paved the way and from a from a consumer's perspective it makes it so much easier when shopping online, especially to see my size displayed Definitely. as opposed to a size six model in, you know, I have no idea what I'm going to look like in that. I have to trust that. You know? no, but, but also that as well, that's, that's where we started. Like we did for mm. a really long time. We had, you know, gorgeous model Morgan, who's just one of the most beautiful women that I know in, in general. But she was a size, well, she was a size eight, but really let's say six to eight. And I think that for me, it was just, she looked, she was so beautiful, but it wasn't about that. It was like all of a sudden, well, hold on. Why are we showcasing someone that's at the very bottom of our size chart? Yeah. You know, and it, it's not relatable. And while she's an incredible woman, I could see how even me, I'm looking at her going, well, I can't relate to, her, to how that looks in the product. And then it was really, it was Fleur and I sitting in the studio one day going, something's missing. Something just does not make sense as to the, the product that we're creating, our incredible fan base that we had at the time, like well, that we do have. Yeah. You know, why are we not showcasing the women that own 30, 40, 50 dresses and mm. that are wearing product every day and it was it was definitely a, a huge deal when we did that um and and honestly it was a bit scary at the time as well yeah I can imagine it would be I mean at the end of the day you need to make sure that your clothes are being represented and if you're not a model you don't know how to pose and you you know you might feel awkward in front of the camera and you know all of that stuff so it's it's actually um, much more work for you to, yeah, to do that. I think that for us at the time, we actually, rather than whether or not our brand was being represented, I guess, you know, really honestly, we're, we're normal people and we feared, yeah. I guess, the, the judgment of the path that we were going down because it was different. And we, we really had quite a, um, a big shift. We literally went from using models to completely shifting to using customers 100%. Mm -hmm. And it really, that we had to really hold strong to the belief that we knew that what we were doing was correct. Um, I remember one of the first photo shoots that we had, and actually probably was about the third one that we had, and one of our amazing customer supermodels really got uh, some nasty messages after it sort of first went, and it really shocked us. We were not prepared for it at all because it yeah. was at a time where it wasn't the norm. Mm. Um, so for us, it just really, we were like, oh my goodness, we could never have expected it, but, but we have to keep going. We've got to keep doing it. Whereas compared to now where it's actually, it is a lot more normal. So yeah. you know, the experience and, and the outcome is so different, but yeah, it was definitely, um, confronting when we did change down that path, you know, which was a good, oh, four years ago now. Wow. Well, I mean, and, and kind of, I want to kind of harp back to, the underwear thing. Yes. Um, something else that I love about your brand. See, you're, you're very accessible and yes. not many designers are. I mean, even before I knew you, I felt like I knew you because oh. your videos are so open and just authentic and your light shines through, but oh, you're also, <laughs> it's true. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but, but I mean, even when it comes down to underwear, like I loved the live that you did after your meeting with, with Triumph last Triumph. year and you're in the fitting room and you're trying on your bras and you're showing us. I mean, it's just, 
it's such a it's awesome it's such an awesome thing to see and um and i think that it then opens up your tribe i guess yeah. of of fans to be able to discuss things like underwear fit and bra sizing and shapewear and you know all that sort of thing quite openly and that's something else that i think that we as women need to feel more comfortable about you know I feel like underwear used to be a bit of a taboo topic um I, I and think, now I think there's so many topics that have been taboo for for women yeah. for years and I think you know for 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 me working in you know a, a female dominant or predominant kind of workspace um I've always been able to kind of have those open conversations but even for me you know there's so many things that I never thought I would have been talking about uh, openly <laughs> And I think to now be in a stage where we actually can have those conversations openly, I think for, for the next generation of women coming through, they're in an amazing space where they can mm. really discover things openly, which I think is uh, very unique. And it's a really positive thing to come out of all of this digital immersion where we're getting this connection, but being able to have these forums where we can have open dialogue. Yeah. And I, I want to, um, can we jump across to body shape? Um, yes. I know that um, I've personally learnt a lot from you over the years. Um, so for people who, who don't follow Lena, um, if you jump onto their site, every single garment also has a video with it where Lena or, or a member of her amazing team will wear the outfit, they'll talk you through the cut, they'll talk you through how to style it, how to wear it, you know, all of this sort of stuff. Um, and you also learn along the way about body shape. So this dress might suit a pair. If you're a pear shape, tie it like yeah. this or, you know, whatever it is. How important do you think um, women understanding their body shape and then dressing according to that, um, how important, how big a part do you think it plays in overall body confidence? Look, I think the more that you can, I, I feel like knowledge is power. So the more mm. that you can know, the more that you can work with things. So for me, the more that you get to know your body shape, your measurements, uh, your proportions, all of those things, it means that you really own your space. Mm. And I think when you own your space, there are always ways that you can elevate and amplify the way you feel on a daily basis. And I think that a lot of shame and also negative talk that can come from all of us that we that we all do at some stage. Like, let's yeah. not pretend that we don't all fall into that space. No. At some <laughs> but it can be it can be so um, debilitating. I want to say, and also as well, I think that there can be a tendency to then hide. And you know, when you're when you're going through that space of not really knowing how to showcase your great parts that that you really do feel confident about, because we all have them. It's just a matter of actually finding them. But mm. when you find them, and then you work out how to work with, okay, you know what? I've got great shaped hips, um, and I've got uh, but and I've got tiny shoulders. How am I going to make that work? And then when you find find the styles in particular, and obviously that's my space of focus on that bit yeah. but when you find those styles that you can really make work it's like all of a sudden you're walking out the door with a with a new fresh feel and it's almost like a completely new face and I just mean when I say face you know in your whole body because you walk differently you know when mm. you found those styles that actually you know, bad you know, yeah I have to hide <laughs> my I can really yeah. now I know the tools now I know the shapes that I can go okay I am going to, you know, if you're an albus, I am going to really highlight that waistline because I know that every time that I do that, it gives me that look and feel and I can walk out the door in confidence. So it's, it's a massive part of that journey towards body positivity is, is knowing your body, knowing your measurements, knowing your proportions and not hiding from them. Yeah. And I think body shape can change over the years That's as well. Fun. It's, you know, I mean, and not necessarily, I'm, I'm an hourglass. I always have been, I still am, but yeah. my proportions have changed. So whereas in using um, your garments as an example, I have always been a huge fan of the Stella. Yeah. In the last year, I've actually found the more fitted styles to be more flattering to my shape. Whereas before um, I would wear them, but I probably wouldn't feel as confident. And now that's shifted. 
So, you know what, though, you know what that is as well, though, um, Nat? A big part of that is that you weren't ready for those styles a few years ago, though, either. Yeah. Like, I think when you go into that more fitted shape, sometimes it can be a little bit of a journey to get there. And I often find that with the Stella dress, like Stella is my, you know, named after my mom. Not my mom. Yeah, and it's one of our absolute best sellers. But for me, she's a real go-to because I always mm. feel confident in that dress. But she's also a doorway because quite often the style of dress is the dress that gets you into the confidence of yeah. being able to wear the other styles. Yeah. Yeah, it's very true. And um, this is totally off topic, but Doesn't the matter. other thing that I love about your <laughs> I love dresses is so... <laughs> they're all named after people. So can I, how yes. do you come up with the names? Oh, look, you know, sometimes you get a feel and I think that there can definitely be styles that you go, oh, what would I, what would I feel like if I was wearing that dress? <laughs> yeah. But also as well, you know, our, our garments being jersey, it was also about that you're travelling with the dresses, you know, not mm. at the moment, obviously that's yeah. changed. Um, <laughs> but it was always kind of that concept of, you know, who are your friends that you're taking on your day trip or on your family or on your holiday with you? And it was almost like, I guess that, that sisterhood feel is follows through in the garments as well, not only in our community, but also in the actual garments themselves. They have their own personality. They really they, do. And I, I feel like they bring the, their personality comes through yeah. you when you wear them. Okay. So like, you know, like Jada, I'm like super saucy in that dress. I you know, love Jada. Like, oh, that's my, like, hands down I was going to wear it, but I wanted some colour. <laughs> No, I know, but gee, that shape on you is just it's made for hourglass, made for hourglass. Oh, it's, it's amazing. But then, you know, like I'll wear Mia and I'll be a little bit, it's a bit more flirty and fun and I just want to dance and flick the hem up and, you know, like it, Absolutely. it's so funny how it comes through. Yeah. <laughs> um, Karen's Beauty Store has just said, um, funny you say that, this is about the Stella. Um, I prefer the more fitted styles and I haven't tried the Stella yet. Oh, so you you should give it a go. And, I mean, the thing is, um, with Lena Broughton garments, if it doesn't fit right, you don't like it, you can return it. You know, like it, it's okay um, to try yes, something definitely. new um, and just see. Because I wouldn't, have tr I wouldn't have ventured across to the fitted styles had I not yeah. had that option, um, yes. you know. And there are some that I see on the models and go, mm, I don't think it'll look good on me. And I've bought them and gone, oh, my God, this is my new favourite dress. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so it makes a difference. Um, and now you've done quite a bit of work and you've raised a, a heap of money with Taryn Brumford and her yes. um, Embrace campaign and Embrace for Kids in particular. Are you able to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so last year we, we actually did the Stella Day, which was uh, in yes. conjunction with Taryn. Which and I was in the Gold Coast for. Yes, yes, it was fabulous. <laughs> and um, look, we raised, it was part of our 25 to Strive campaign, and we do those campaigns each year. And the one that we did with Taryn was really specifically around body positivity. And um, for any of those of you that haven't seen her original movie, which was Embrace, which is just about... Amazing. Oh, and pack the tissues. Phenomenal. I don't, I don't even know really how to put it into words, but just about the phenomenon of, um, you know, how bad body positivity is globally. Mm. And I know that Taryn calls it, you know, a global epidemic, basically, with how bad it is. Mm. Um, and so, I don't know, Fleur and I went along to that movie and it just really hit us. On a daily basis, you know, we hear the stories of women who are not feeling confident about themselves and, and really giving themselves a hard time. So it really hit home for us. That was something really relevant to us as a brand. And then for the Embrace movie that Taryn's working on, which is for the kids, um, which will be going into schools and be mandatory as well, it was just... It was an absolute no-brainer for us as a brand to align with something like that because, again... And there's a great book you know, as well that she's done. Yeah. 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 It's just come out. And, you know, it's one thing for us to work on ourselves now as women, but that next generation coming through, if there's any gift that we can give them, it's that they don't go through life with the, the same insecurities that we've been through. So it's about how we empower them from a really young age as well. Yeah. I actually... Um... I had uh, a conversation with my niece who is 16, just turned 16, at her 16th birthday party, actually. And yeah. um, she, <laughs> I'm like, if she's watching, she's going to hate that I'm sharing this. But anyway. Um, <laughs> no and, names mentioned. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> and my, she just had a conversation with my dad. My dad's living in the States at the moment. It was a video chat. And um, it's a very 
it's a Middle Eastern thing. I think it's a, it's a, lots of different cultures will do it where they'll be like, oh, you know, you're, you're looking really healthy or, you know, you put on a bit of weight, but it's not done in a negative way. It's actually, no. it, it's, you know, a positive thing. But I mean, as a 16 year old to go, oh, you, you know, you've put on a bit of weight. Um, like it, it just, she went, oh yeah, well, I guess I have. Oh. And so she was, I offered her some lollies at her birthday and she's like, oh no, probably better not. And I'm like, it's your birthday. No calories on your birthday. Eat up. And oh, um, no. she's like, oh no, you know, Dede said, you know, I've put on a bit of weight and I, I had, like I have, and I'm like, she is, slim and fit she's sporty she's tall and gorgeous and and I was like whoa hang on a sec we need to have a conversation and you know what though? I just think oh. with social media though like being a teenager in, the, in this day and age I mean I feel like I was so unaware of that stuff at that age I really was I was like mm. kind of too busy you know I was I was thinking about it but not to the same extent but I think for teenagers now, for, for what they're being fed through media, what they're seeing, like in their own personal feeds, I'm not talking about necessarily what's in campaigns and stuff, but just the bombardment of, of body image and uh, shape, but also beauty and all, all those categories really from such a young age that they're exposed to. I mean, I just wasn't exposed to that growing up. So I really... Yeah, it's a complete, it's a different layer. It's a very dangerous layer. Um, it is. It's... I don't know. When I was a teenager, I was I was always self conscious, and you know, once again, I think it, it's the background. I'll never forget. <laughs> I went over to my uncle's place, and um, and he's like, "Oh, look, you know, you, that puppy fat's not going away." And I think I was twelve at the time, and I remember it like now. And it's they're not saying it out of malice. It's just they're just so freaking I'm literally going oh like my goodness. yeah oh, I went to Egypt and my cousin I hadn't been for a year and my cousin came up grabbed the fat on my arm oh. and said oh look at this and I'm like are you serious but I think that's <laughs> why, that's why education, but that's why education is so important though because yeah. the reality is is that we all hold on to those funny little things that mm. you know it'd be one person said one thing 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And as humans, it's natural for us to really grab onto that. So I think that a really big part of that education piece is ensuring that we do change language, that we are more mindful of, you know, the impact of how something minor can really be really, you know, something that someone else can grab onto and hold onto for the rest of their life as well. So that's, again, yeah. it's all education. I think the old adage, you know, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt me. It's like, uh, yeah, no, they do. <laughs> <laughs> we need to change that. I've come on to that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any advice to anyone who is, is suffering from, um, you know, a lack in, in body confidence at all? I do. And look, I think that there's, you know, a lot of, you know, general ones out there that you can go out and you can find 10 tips for body positivity. But so for me, I think I've got a little bit maybe of, a, of an unusual one or couple. But I think first is, again, getting to know your body shape. It's really important. And the journey with that is actually connecting with who you are and knowing yourself really well. But the second one, I think, is actually equally as important, if not more important, is know your cycles. Um, so I mm. think that actually really connecting in with your, your menstrual cycles and the way that your body changes, because I know that for me, you know, the time that I'm toughest on myself is the seven days prior to my period. Mm. And it is like clockwork. And I will wake up on that day and I'll go, oh, God, why? You know, and start that negative talk. And then I'm like, straight away, I grab my phone, I check the app on my phone and I go, got it okay, well, I'm just not going to even listen to that voice for the next three days. Yeah. Um, and I also know, because, you know, I'm, I'm really deeply immersed in that space of getting to know my measurements from the difference from when I have my period to when I don't. And the fluctuation is actually massive. And mm. I think that if you know that, you can give yourself a break because we mm. can actually really tough on our style on ourselves when hormonally we've got a lot going on and I just think that as women it's really empowering if you can actually get to know your cycles really not well get to know how your body changes throughout that time and then you can start to navigate it because a lot of things mm. that you can give yourself a hard time for are actually a moment in time yeah that is that is really great advice and I think that um a lot of women myself included 
need to kind of have more of an understanding of our cycles and not only um, from body changes, but emotions and all of that. I mean, Mostly. I think you just assume that it's like, oh, you're pms -y. And that's just what people have said for so many years. But it's not just before. No, it, it, it can happen like over ovulation. I know I get super Absolutely. emotional when I'm ovulating um, and super bloated then yeah. as well. Like it's, you know, um, so I but think it's something that we do need to master. Oh, absolutely. And, and you can also find your peak times as well. Mm. So quite often what I'll do is that if I've got negative self-talk, and look, we all have it. I don't think that's yeah. going to disappear. But again, it's going to be it. And I'll be like, okay, I'm leaving that on the table for a minute. I'll come back when I know sort of I'm, I'm in my – and you can feel it. Your whole energy changes and shifts. And I'm like, okay, check back in. Was that true? Was that mm. real? How much of that was just – and then also as well, I think the other thing is to not attach to it. So when you start that negative talk, you know, um, I think it's Mel Robbins has that, you know, the, the uh, five second rule, five second rule, mm. you know, but I think, you know, even if you cut it down to three, right. And you go three, yeah. two, one, let it go. So yeah. it's okay to have those thoughts, but don't grab onto them because you know, where the, where the focus goes, the energy flows, right. Mm. So if you're in that negative space and you lean into it and really uh, attach to it, then you're just feeding it. So it's like, no, I need to snap out of this. Three, two, one, let it go. Check my app. Okay, that's where I'm at. I can come back to this in a few days' time. Um, but yeah. Sure that's 100% not how I actually feel. It's just a moment in time. Yeah, really detaching yourself from the um, the the mean girl within, as Melissa Ambrosini, Hopefully. you know, says, you know. <laughs> We've Hopefully. all got her and, man, she can be oh. a bitch sometimes. <laughs> has like awareness that she does exist and don't try mm. to don't try to get rid of her she's got a good she's got a she'll protect you in many bad situations as well but just yeah. let her bring her out to party and when you tell her to yeah <laughs> yeah take a hike oh, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's wonderful and we, we touched on social media um before um i am and i've confessed this many times so people will know I have been known to edit my photos and yeah. I have apps that I love. Thank you, You Can Perfect, yeah. for making my arms thinner and, you know, and I do it in a way that I look like me, but yeah. I'm just like, oh, I didn't wear shapewear that day, so we'll just smooth that out, and, you know. Now, that's n I've never, ever done anything with my photos pre-social media. I would never no, have even thought yeah. about it. Um, okay. The way that that's changed for me is everything I do where I've always been the photo queen. Everyone just knows they don't need to take photos because Nat's going to be taking the photos, you know, and I've completely stopped that. In the past few years, I don't post my, – my, my business page is very different to my personal page. My personal page, I'm not really posting. And if they're photos of me, they're generally selfies because I can't trust that the person taking the photo is going to get the right angle – and that's going to bring me down and I don't want people to see any weight gain or, you know, anything like that. So I, I'm very controlling about it. And I, I wrote a blog post um, about a year ago now and <laughs> I still can't believe I wrote it. But anyway, it was all about my personal journey with body confidence. And I put up a yeah. photo of me in a swimsuit in Vietnam. Yeah. It was the best day, the most gorgeous weather, this beautiful background and a friend of mine who's a photographer took it and it was beautifully framed. And all I could look at was my stomach. And I'm like, yeah. oh, why didn't I suck in? Why didn't I that? So the photo I posted was the edited photo. But for yeah. this article, I put up the before and the after. And you had to kind of look and see. It wasn't, it wasn't so much of a difference that I'm like a supermodel in the second one. But the mere fact that I could not separate myself from my my mean girl I guess um mm -hmm. enough to go look at this beautiful experience that I had and I want to share that with everyone and it became all about the paunch yeah it it really woke me up and so I've been trying very hard to um shift away from that um, yeah. but there are a lot of people and there's a lot of, um, a lot of people don't understand that a lot of the stuff they see on social media isn't real. 
that's why I like video now because you can tell it is. No, um, totally. You know. But I also like video because that's what humans are. Like we're not made to be yeah, true. <laughs> It's like, it's, it's, it's kind of like a dress on a coat hanger, you know, they're not made yeah. to be hang coat hangers. They're made to be worn. I love the Yeah. Yeah. It's very real. Yeah. But what do you, how, how do you feel about the social media culture of wanting to, or feeling a need to feel more perfect um, than, you know, you in real life as per your perspective, if well, that makes sense? Yeah, it does. I think it's really tricky because on the one hand, technology is amazing. So I mm. am an absolute tech junkie. So <laughs> I, on the one hand, am just like blown away when something's available. And I'm like, that is so amazing. Why would we not use it? But yeah. I think it's really a question to yourself, really, about what the thought process is. Because for me, if you're looking at photos of yourself and you really don't feel comfortable with them and you're not at that stage, then then don't do it, I think, yeah. is, is the big bit for me. Like, don't feel like you have to. Rather than trying to get perfect photos, then, you know, you don't have to do the full-length photos if you're not in that space at the moment. Yeah, do hence my selfies now. <laughs> no, exactly. But, but, but that's great. And then you get to capture the moment and still be in that moment and not be stressing mm. about it afterwards. I think as far as the, the evil the evil gene of comparison, you know, the comparison is the most, um, the, the fastest way to tear, your, tear yourself down in any single moment. And I think that, again, that's human nature. Like it's actually, mm. really, I think that's a really tricky one to change. Um, yeah, again, that journey word comes up. It's a journey. And I think yeah. even for us, because we're taking photos all the time, you still, you look at photos and you go, oh, gee, I didn't know that I looked like that. And you do yeah. you focus on something. <laughs> but I think, again, one of the really big tips to starting on that journey is having full-length mirrors at home, I think, mm. um, and making sure that you uh, do have full-length mirrors at home and you really connect with yourself and learn to love yourself on a daily basis without having to put it on social media. Mm. And I love what you said before about finding that part of your body that you do love and really yeah. focusing on that and dressing yeah. to that. Um, yeah. And, you know, I've, I've started doing some mirror work as well yeah. where, you know, before I get in the shower. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'll, you know, and, it, and it's trying to project that love to no, yourself exactly. instead of, Hate. <laughs> exactly but also as well you know don't jump right into the 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 raw mirror that's in the worst spot of the house like yeah the, the front. with the like, down light yeah exactly like you know it's like get yourself a mirror that that makes you feel amazing like see how yeah. beautiful you are because i guarantee you that's the way the people around you see you and and move don't stand in front of the mirror and just be like oh how do i look it's like <laughs> yeah move like a human and get used yeah. to yourself but i think that a lot of the time when people are in a really negative space about how they're feeling and how they look, um, because that is, you know, other people are looking at you, we're human, we see, that's what we do. Then mm. it's, it is actually a journey to, to really connect with yourself on that level, look at yourself in the mirror and don't be afraid to look at yourself and find those beautiful parts. It doesn't have to be, oh, I've got a great waistline. Maybe you're like, oh, I've got the perfect hair and mm. ears to wear the most mm. fabulous yeah. earrings in the world. Yeah, well, yeah. Do that. And it's yeah. those little crumbs along the way that help you on that journey to seeing the beautiful parts that, that your friends see in you, that your family see in you, that for whatever reason you're not seeing at that time. Yeah, and knowing that what you are hyper aware of, yeah. other people probably can't see at all. A hundred percent. Like every time that we've done photo shoots with um, customers, and we're like, oh, you know, just talking to them going, is, is there anything in particular that, you know, that you're conscious of or whatever, because we don't want to make, we don't want you to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I would say that every single time, whatever the customer has said that they're conscious of, we're like, what? 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 <laughs> like, it's something we would never have even picked up on in the slightest. So it's yeah. kind of true that other people don't see your insecurities. Yeah, well, there are some su such great tips there. Um, Liz has said, thanks for the tip, she's going to buy a full-length mirror. Good. So, yeah. Buy a good one. Buy a good quality one with really yeah. beautiful quality glass that's framed nicely. Find a beautiful...
Sorry, that was just oh, my that's battery right. about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, yeah, and invest in a really good quality one, and and really, you know, buy one and then buy another one, and then you know, yeah, it's good. It's good to connect to yourself. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, let's jump across to some beauty questions with the pink hibiscus rapid fire. Um, right. To start off with, what is the best piece of beauty advice that you've ever been given? So it's actually from one of my first boyfriends who was much Ooh. older than me. Yeah, I must have been, oh gosh, 17, 18 at the time. Yes. And I was just sort of discovering skincare and he said, "Don't uh, your, your body will get used to anything that you do. So any routine that you do, it'll get used to. So mm. make sure if you're embracing a routine that you're prepared to keep on going with it. Mm. So, you know, he was talking about, you know, if you moisturize your body, then your body wants more moisturizer. Yeah. So I was like, so that was my tip about if ever I'm looking at new, you know, the next new fad, I'm thinking, oh. Can I commit to it? <laughs> yeah, can, I commit? can I commit? Can I commit to five serums a night? A hundred percent, no, I cannot. Yeah. <laughs> Something interesting with that as well, and I, I learned this from a hairdresser, um, and it is the same for skincare as well, is that your body does get used to it. And so that yeah. you need to shift it up sometimes. So especially with hair care, nice. um, you'll Very find nice. that you've got this great shampoo and conditioner and it's working brilliantly. And then one day you use it and you're like, yeah. why is my hair limp? <laughs> you, know? exactly. Exactly. you need to Good trick reminder. your body. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's so true. See, you, your first boyfriend, he was onto it. I know. He was. I know. <laughs> What's the one skincare product that you can't live without? So this has been quite a new one for me in the last year, but it's jojoba oil. So mm. I um, switched up and I just found that for me, the jojoba oil as a base, I use it every day. It goes on. It's not an oil. It's, um, I think it's something else. I don't know the, the scientific background behind it. Mm. But I just put it on and my, my skin just laps it up. I absolutely love it. And I feel like it, it um, has more moisture to it for me. Yeah. Are you using it as well as a moisturizer? No. <laughs> I know. I, know. So the, I always get to this point at Ben Pink Hibiscus Lab and I'm like, so tell me a little bit about and everyone's no, like, oh, no, no, am yeah. I supposed to be doing I was, that? <laughs> I was kind of cringing a little bit about this part um, now. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to say I'm proud of my skincare routine, but it is what it is. <laughs> Look, you have beautiful skin, so whatever you're doing is working. And you know what? It, it, it's, like, it's like clothes. You've got yeah. to do what's right for you, what makes you feel good. And yeah. at the end of the day, I'm all about advocating. You, I do what I do because I want people to be able to leave the house and feel confident. Yes. And, yes. you know, if using jojoba oil without a moisturizer makes you feel confident and you're getting great results, got more power to you. That is fantastic. All right, all right. You're saving time in your routine. Now I'm thinking maybe it's not, but I just okay. no. <laughs> when, when we meet in person, I'll do a skin analysis and let you know. Yes, please. <laughs> we'll have a pamper afternoon with all the ladies. Fabulous. I love it. Yes. <laughs> so what does your morning skincare routine look like? Very simple. I am... Yeah. I'm a, I'm a real morning person. So for me, I'm, I'm studying, I'm learning, I'm yogering, I'm, I'm doing all that stuff. I have quite a big morning routine. So for me, it is literally cleanser in the shower and then I yep. jump out. That's jojoba oil. And that is yep. literally it. Are you wearing sunscreen since you are in the Gold Coast now? Do you know? So I feel <laughs> like I went through stages. I think that uh, honestly, being honest, um, mm. my morning, that I had that were, had SPF in it um, ran out and then I just wasn't using it. So yeah. I also, in, in fairness, haven't really been outside. We haven't really been outside since April. Um, yes. So, yeah. You know, we have, but I guess it's, um, but no, no. And it's a good reminder because I definitely do need to. Well, also because you're using an oil. So yeah. you're going to find that it will attract the sun also incidental sun even when you're driving yeah. um reflections you know if you're working by a window walking to the shops all that sort of incident incidental sun does kind of um play a part so especially yeah. when you're using an oil i yes. think it it might be something just to re I, I consider reintroducing mm -hmm. into your an actual spf so not a moisturizer an actual spf 
Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. because right. it's um, it's a it's a very limited amount when you when you're getting moisturizers that have an SPF in it. It's not actually enough um okay. to protect your skin. So yeah, okay. so even if you don't add the moisturizer, add an SPF. I'm happy okay. with that. <laughs> okay, all right, great. What's it? What's it? There you go. <laughs> and what does your evening routine look like? It's exactly the same. Yeah. Exactly the same. I have, I've become, somewhere along the line, I have become a two shower a day person. I love yeah, water. I am I too. Like, I just, something happens to me in water. I just, I just feel healed. Uh, so yeah. at, at night it's the cleanser as well, just wiping off makeup. Um, and yeah. I will sometimes use the jojoba oil to actually get my makeup off as well. Yeah, it's great to get makeup yeah. off. Yeah. And, and then I will put the jojoba oil back on as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm a two shower a day. I do love love my showers. I um, I turn them into <laughs> gratitude showers. Oh, so, like yeah. So I do a little bit of a visualization. I love it when I'm wearing a shower cap as well because then you can hear the oh. the water. So I'll do, and I'm not wasting water. I am doing other stuff while no, I'm no. doing this. But you know, I tend to visualize that the water coming out of the shower is all this positive energy and then anything that's negative goes through my feet down the drain. Like I do this kind of, and I think about what I'm, what I'm grateful for, for the day. And, you know, and yeah, in the morning I set intentions and the evening I do gratitude. And it's just this, it just kind of turns it something that's quite mundane, like into yeah. a little bit of a ritual. I love which it. Which I quite love. Yeah. Steal that one. Yeah. Now. <laughs> um, so Pascal has asked any tips for women with olive skin I live in Perth well I have olive skin um, and I guess olive skin it doesn't need to be treated any differently than any other um, coloured complexion um, at all it's more about what skin type you have so I'm more than happy if you want to message me um, offline and tell me a little bit about whether you think you've got normal or sensitive or combination skin we can kind of talk through that um, and see what you're doing and see if I can help Pascal thank you um, now if we were to take a sneak peek into your handbag right now what would we find in the realm of beauty? <laughs> in the re <laughs> yes, yes, good. That could have gone off on quite a tangent. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, on the realm of beauty, I am a lip gloss junkie. So I have multiple lip glosses. I also have my concealer as well. Like I just find yeah. that in the afternoon, I just find a little bit of concealer can just make me feel a bit more fresh, especially because we do so much video. Um, yeah. Then essential oils. I always have like a lavender or something in there as well. But lip gloss is my, uh, I love it. I've got one for moisturizing. I've got one for color. I've got a different shades and yeah. I can't seem to be able to, re I'm looking down because I've literally. Yeah, I know. I'm like, yeah, right I want to see. I want to see <laughs> these lip glosses that you speak oh, of. I've got, <laughs> I've got, you know, there's my, I've got a little liquid concealer. I've got that color there. I'm loving this. Oh, is that's a, a nice color. Love. I was actually thinking I need to. I like because we had a clear gloss on before. It looks beautiful. Oh, that's nice. No, it's, it was actually this one. I. Um, oh, was it? Yeah, I'm not a lipstick person. I don't like, yeah. I just never have liked the way lip glosses um, feel. And then I've got your classic, like, Vaseline. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like your Carmex and Blistex and all those, no, you know. Totally. Yeah. And I've, oh, God, the, the hole goes deep, actually, in there. And there's other compartments. Oh, and I always have I a little and moisturizer as well. Yes, very good, very good. No, lip glosses and lipstick, I actually just, trans uh, like kind of came across to lipsticks recently because I've always been a lip gloss girl um yeah. and um a friend of mine um has so smelly cosmetic <laughs> and yeah well I layer now I have so oh. much fun layering with different colors so oh, I'll use nice. um a lipstick and then I'll kind of I'll and I I, I challenge myself too so I might put like a darker lipstick Stick, and then I'll tone it down with like maybe more of a pastel lip gloss and just you can create your own colors it's so fun love it love it I love it too um well let us wrap up with a deep one a deep okay. question okay what advice would you know <laughs> what advice would you give to your younger self oh uh, 
I would say just go for it. Like yeah. don't, don't, don't care so much, have fun, um, go out, make mistakes, uh, drive, like run for the things, run towards the things that you really want, um, which I think I have done as well. I guess I'm, I'm really proud of, um, I'm really proud of my journey. I think I've made lots of mistakes, but I'm okay with all of them. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I keep learning and, and throwing myself out there. I'm a definitely a open arms kind of open hearted person. So I, throw myself into situations time and time again and yeah I don't regret any of it so yeah I'd be saying to my younger self just go for it have fun yeah you're gonna have fun along the way <laughs> yeah but yeah make mistakes don't worry about yeah. it yeah well you wouldn't be where you are today had you not done that so Absolutely. you know it's um and it has been an epic journey and I love seeing the progression of the brand the progression of of you and um it's a wonderful thing to follow along I mean I think it's been about four or five years now that I've kind of been following very closely <laughs> and yeah. you can and you can see the changes and you can see the advancements and um and I think it's wonderful and you should be you and and your team and Fleur and you know should be so proud of the community that you have created and Thanks. the amazing work that you're you're doing in boosting women's self confidence and making them feel more beautiful than they do normally. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, Flo oh, and I are so, so, so proud and so grateful. We've got an incredible team, and um, yeah, we've got we've got a, a couple of really big things happening in the next month, two months. So yeah, oh, they posted. Exciting, exciting. Mm. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us, Lena. Thank you so much for your advice. And Thank for you. taking the time out and for all those who were watching and interacted. Thank yes. you. Now, where can they find you? We, we're very easy. You can link through for my name there, but Lena uh, au is, is us. And, uh, and we have weekly releases. So every Tuesday, every Friday, we've got new product being released and, it's available in size 8 to 24 and we're pure play online so that's that's the space to connect with us but you can you'll, you'll see many videos of us once you yeah. click across <laughs> yeah it's it's a rabbit hole once you watch it one is. you're like oh, what's next it is, it is, it is. <laughs> well thank you so much and i hope we get to connect in person i'm dying to come up north again I know. hopefully soon yes <laughs> Definitely. Hey, thanks so much for having me today, Nat. It was, it was awesome. You're Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. Well, we'll speak very soon. Thank you guys so much. I'll be back with another Pink Eye Biscuits Live next Thursday night at 8 o'clock. So stay tuned. I'll give you more info. Thanks, Lena. Thanks, Nat. Bye. Bye.